If anyone should have the massive interest in ubiquination, I'm going to run over the fundamentals fast. Ubiquination, well, I'm going to die saying this word over and over again, is a form of post-translantal post modifications in which the ubiquitin protein is attached to a substance. What is up guys and welcome back to what is going to be, well, a little prognosis on the drug GT229 from Kenta Pharma's platform named Protac. So first off, let's start by taking a look at what GT229 really is. And from now on, I will refer to GT229 as just GT, just to make it easier for me to get through this video without having a stroke from saying all these numbers over and over again. By the way, before we start the video, I'm not going to talk about their trials or anything related to the Kintor studies or whatever is going on there. This is mainly going to be an assumption based on studies of what you guys might expect from this drug. So GT is a so-called PROTEC drug. The mechanisms of PROTEC is to use the UPS system to ubiquinate and degrade the target protein. So once the protect molecules combined with the target protein with the E3 ligase together to form a generic complex, which includes E3 ligase ubiquinating the target protein to initiate the degradation process. The ubiquitinated target proteins is recognized and degraded by the 20X protosome, which is part of the eukaryotic cells of UPS. The ability of Protex to induce the degradation of the target protein is not limited to the binding site within the kinase dom domain, and it may also be achieved when the kinase activity is not the singular action of the target protein. I have linked some studies down below if you want to check out some studies that confirm whatever I just said, but that's the gist of it. If anyone should have the massive interest in ubiquination, I'm going to run over the fundamentals fast. Ubiquination, well, I'm going to die saying this word over and over again, is a form of post-translantal post modifications in which the ubiquitin protein is attached to a substrate protein. It is a three-step process that involves three enzymes, the ubiquitin activating enzyme, and also the ubiquitin conjugating enzyme, and last, the ubiquitin protein ligase. So now we know the fundamentals on how GT is going to work. And I'm guessing at this point that it seems a little more complicated than just degrading a receptor. So there's a vast difference in just blocking a receptor and going as far as degrading it. So fun fact, did you know that actually some plants already can work as an androgen antagonist? They actually developed that way to kill off some species that, species that feed on them. Hence, blocking receptors isn't something new, even plants have done it for years on. But if you want to know more about how Protec drug works, I've placed a link down below and I can also strongly recommend this book I'm gonna link up to here. This is Wang and Dale's Pharmacology and it's great stuff. Or you can just stay around on this channel if you want to know more about these kind of things. So now we have the basics in order. I thought it's a good time to take a look at how other androgen receptor degraders have done in the past studies. The first one is a fairly interesting study since they compare their receptor degrader to an older candidate for androgen antagonism, namely RU59063. Now, what is really remarkable about this study is not only, of course, did it outperform RU, but it actually ach achieved but it actually achieved a DC50, also known as 50%, receptor downgrading and owed at only one micromole. And also in this next study is some interesting stuff going on with our receptor downgraders, especially the study named Androgen Receptor Degradation by Proteolysis Targeting Chimera ARCC-4 outperforms enzalutamide in cellular models of prostate cancer drug resistance. Nevertheless, we have three interesting things in this title. 
namely the receptor degradation, outperforms in solutamide and drugs resistance. So basically this study is evaluating a derivative of the Protag drug I just explained about earlier. But not only that, they had some interesting findings reporting that the ARCC4, the receptor downgrader, induce apoptosis at EC50, 50% of maximal effective dosages. That was tenfold lower than in salutamide. And not only that, it actually ended up achieving 95% degradation. I've linked all the studies as usual in the bottom for those who want to learn more about this stuff. So I don't really know what to say. This stuff looks like the stuff of our dreams, but I won't really start clapping yet. First off, none of these studies promised us that GT is going to produce the same results. As a matter of fact, I believe that it won't. For the drug to be available to the public over the counter, as we say, it usually has to be the weaker version of it. Take for example retinoids. They are superior in reversing signs of aging on the skin and other stuff, but usually the stuff you can get over the counter is a fairly weak version of them, while getting access to the really potent stuff usually requires a prescription. But let's see, I might be wrong and we might be looking forward to a freaking monster of an androgen degrader. So this puts me at my assumption for the future of GT. And I have a feeling that we aren't really looking for a drug as strong as the ones I just mentioned before. Mainly because they are used to, well, cure cancer. And while you have L cancer, well, I don't think there's a lot of side effects you won't really endure while taking a drug that is only for cosmetics and appeal doesn't really carry that great of an importance. So finding a drug with a lot of power and a minimum of side effects is going to be a little more tricky than just, well, trying to cure cancer. Not that it is, tri not that it is easy or anything, but well, yeah, you get the point. And based on those assumptions, I believe that GT is going to be, become some kind of the new kid on the block meaning that 5-alpha reductase inhibitors and androgen antagonists are still going to be a massive part of our stack. But we are just going to have the option of degrading our receptors as well at the same time. So honestly, my assumption is that it won't be that great, you know, end of all hair loss, problems, drug or anything, but it Kinda might be something more to add in the mix that we can attack male pattern baldness from more angles with in the future. So there you have it. Take from it whatever you like and you know that well. If you like this kind of content, remember to tap the like button and consider to subscribe. And guys, that's it for today. Until next time, cheers.